So I worked with the Grenfell Action Group and residents from Grenfell Tower over a period of many months, mainly during the summer of 2015. Um, they wanted to get their voices and their concerns about the building heard. They were really worried about the potential fire hazards here. Um, there were boilers being put in um, by the contractors. Blocking doorways was the proposal. Um, so I worked with them to help them get organised. Um, were the and contractors asking residents for their the, input? I, the contractors said, the contractors and the tenant management organisation said they'd done a consultation. The consultation was rubbish. Um, they had designed a show flat and shown the tenants the show flat. When the work started happening in the flats, the actual residence properties, it was nothing like it was in the show flat. The residents asked the TMO to listen to them. They wrote to senior managers in the TMO. The TMO didn't respond. I wrote to them on behalf of the organisation and the residents, and they didn't respond to us. Meanwhile, the residents knew the only time the residents started to get listened to was when they shut their doors, put signs on the doors, refusing the contractors' access to their flats, yeah. and protested outside the housing management office. And I think they signed petitions. We're and going to hear, uh, hopefully, in the coming days, from the TMO, from the contractors. Uh, these are allegations, and obviously we will give them the right to respond to this. But your sense tonight, uh, y you have got members of your own group missing, is that right? In the yes, building? yes. There's women who I've tried to call today, and their phones are dead. And from what I understand, they've not been identified or found yet. Um, a lot of people will have read today um, the piece that was written in 2016 predicting loss of life. Just explain to us what, what you meant by that piece. Ed, the guy who wrote that piece, was very, very aware, not professional, but it was obvious that the standard of works was really, really shoddy and really, really poor. Boilers in front of front doors. Um, pipe work sticking out inches outside of the walls. There were power surges that weren't looked into, where the build lights in the building went dead, and the fire, the emergency lighting, um, didn't come on. Um, and these residents asked again and again and again, and it was only, they were threatened with legal action um, when they said that they wanted this work to take place. You know, and you've got a cost-cutting well, council yeah. we, we... That, that isn't listening to its residents. It's a part privatised organisation. And you've got a big building company, Ryden, that is getting a lot of money from a lot of contracts across London there is... and doing shoddy work. And, I, I... and it's not just here, it's in other parts of London as well. There is, there and it's is... very distressing. And like you said, this is a very unequal area. These are poor residents, or they're ordinary residents. They're not the wealthy, they're not the Camerons. They can't afford private schools, they can't afford lawyers. They tried to get lawyers, but because of the legal aid cuts, they couldn't get lawyers.